Stephen behind some very happy blue eyes today. Well, I'm not going off too early, but I'm ecstatic. It's unreal, isn't it? They played so good. Um, when, you, when you look at the way Queensland played in the wet weather, they played wet weather footy. We threw the ball around. We were, we were unbelievable. And it was attitude, wasn't it? Like from the from the kickoff, um, New South Wales were on. Yeah, they were dominant. I mean, it happens in Origin too. I, I reckon a, it's a great a great advertisement for the game when you collect the ball in the first ten minutes. You can sit back and watch and say, you know, we're on here tonight. And you know, at at the halftime score was it what was it sixteen eight or something like that at halftime, whatever it was. Uh, New South Wales were ahead exactly the same way that they were in the first game when they led eight nil. And I thought, hello, they're going to they're going to strike back here, but there was no sign of it in the second half. New South Wales opened the scoring again, and they just marched on. Had you seen something during the week? Because you spent the week in Perth, obviously uh, um, I, you taking know, selfies and a few autographs here mate, and there it, with your Perth. It's it's uh, easy to say after the event, mm. but I I was confident when when they put a little bit more experience in, mm. you know, in in Maloney and then in the bench with Wade Graham and those sort of guys. Even Finucane, look, if Finucane plays for Queensland, if he's a Queenslander, he's played twenty Origins, so it was his first go. I thought he was absolutely oh everyone there wasn't there wasn't a bad player for New South Wales. So I was thinking with Maloney and the whole dynamics of the chat at training and everything changed with him being there. He's a chatterbox. Everything, lifting blokes up all the time and, you know, barking orders and all that sort of stuff. Whereas in the first camp, it was, it was pretty quiet. They prepared properly. There's no doubt about that, but it was pretty quiet. So I, I think, you know, those sort of guys with the experience made the, made the difference. James is a lovely <laughs> bloke, but he has been accused of giving Panadol a headache over time. But, but that's what you need. Mate, you need that. You in sort of need the chatter. Do huh? you, know, you know the most amazing thing for me with that guy? Uh, I, I watch a lot of footy, and as you do, I see blokes make mistakes and they and they sort of, you know, go in a little bit of a hole and put their head down and, and, you know, sort of mull around for the next couple of minutes. This guy makes a mistake. If he does make a mistake, it, it, it's sort of, it's gone. He, he just, it doesn't affect him in any way. And he just marches on. I loved after the game when uh, there was a couple of, there was a couple of late shots near the end of the game. And in the interview after the game, Jimmy Rulani said, oh, you want to play like that, do you? Okay. Game on. Let's go. I, l- I love that. We can play like that too. Yeah, exactly. He's, he's in the face. And look, it's not a bad template to take. It's not, it's not a bad example to follow. Look at the example of him over here, right? And then look at the example of Latrell over here. And yeah. the point I'm trying to make is that James was in really poor form at the start of the year. Everyone was yeah. saying, should he be shipped off to England? Yeah. He looked at the mirror. He said... I'm going to shake this up. He comes out for two games against Penrith, yeah. grabbed the game by the scruff of the neck, yep. and he demanded to be in front. Now, Luttrell is a brilliant player, an extraordinary talent. Mm. He's copped a setback. Yep. We all cop setbacks in life, yep. no matter what you do. Well, it's how you come back from the and setback. And that's it. It's how you test it. So against, uh, against Melbourne, if he just comes out roaring, it's almost like you've got to put it you got to get over these things quickly yeah. and use them to push yourself into that next sphere. You know, every, everything's not going to go your way in sport all the time, you know. So, you know, you've got to, as you said, you've got to take the, the good with the bad. Um, I reckon Freddie's sitting back there now seeing how Latrell reacts to uh, to the axing. Um, you know, he was saying about, it was more it was more about, you know, not doing what he was meant to do in the game. It wasn't about, you know, it wasn't about, you know, his form was, you know, was out the window. It was it was about what he needed to do during the game, and he didn't do it. And you know you got to applaud Freddie for that. I mean he lives by his convictions, mate. What he did was was unbelievable. It startled a lot of people, but you know he's come out rosy, hasn't he? Well, you are, you and I were older, we're greyer, but we've had setbacks. We've had setbacks in our li- oh, lives, I've in our careers. Plenty. We've had them, but yeah. you uh, you learn, don't you? you? Learn as you go on. The, the quicker that you just say, okay. I've got to march forward here. I've got to make yeah. myself better out yeah. of this. Yeah. The better it is for you. And, and, <clears throat> and pardon me, and having a mentor, someone, mm. someone that you trust that you can talk to. I mean, oh, mate, I've buggered up plenty of times, you know, but someone you can go and talk to and say, mate, you know, what do I need to do to, to get back to where I was or where I want to go? And get better at it, yeah. yeah. Uh, all right, now, um, it's an interesting <coughs> thing. Nathan Cleary, uh, fingers crossed he's going to be okay yeah. because, uh, look, yeah, we got fast healers, slow healers. Yeah. He apparently is a fast healer. I love fast uh, healers. Yeah, the syndesmosis apparently, and without getting too medically minded, <laughs> yeah. uh, is intact. So yeah. uh, there's a chance that he'll be okay. But it's, look, it's a quick timeline. What do you do if he doesn't play? If he's okay, he plays. Mm. Uh, if he if he doesn't play, I bring Clemmer back into the side, 
and I leave it as is. And that's, that, how, do you, how do you shuffle it all around? That's what well, well I'd play. I'd play Wade Graham what, at five eight, going it, yeah. and I'd play Wade Graham at five eight, like they did in the second half in the second game, and I leave Jimmy Maloney there. I leave him at halfback. And what do you do with? Do you, do you still start with Jake at prop? Yeah, hundred percent. I, I I do exactly the same as what they did in that game, but I bring I bring Clemmer back in, and then then I do. So you put Clemmer on the bench. No, no. I start. Sorry, I start with Clemmer. And you put si- Siafidi. Or? So, well, Siafidi might might miss out. Someone has to miss out. Mm. You know, because for the we're, starting because we're yeah because we're bringing Clemmer back. He was good though, wasn't he? Because because he cops some criticism. Oh. You know, cops some criticism Mate. from the bleachers. People come out and said, oh oh, he's only a forty minute player. He's yeah. not going to offer you what Clemmer offered. He got out there and he arrived the moment he took the first touch. Well, he put his hand up to take the kick off. Mm. Oh, mate, as soon as he did that, I went, "This kid's going to be all right." Because, mate, as easy as running into a brick wall is, you still got to be able to do it, mate. It's easy to tell you how to do it. It's hard to do. Um, when they said if we if they kick off, who's going to take the ball? He went, "Mate, I am." And I went, I, "I lost all my nervousness about him." I thought, you know, this kid, he he wants to, he wants to go now. Can you imagine how hard it was, Timmy? Um, just to understand it, that at, at Newcastle, Clemmer's the play one play. He runs off the back of Clemmer. No Clemmer. He has to take the first one, mate. He did an enormous job. And I thought his second stint was even better. Like, he was breaking tackles. And, you know, it's like, for that game, he'll be, uh, he'll be even better now. Turbo. Wow. Turbo. Like, look, had all these hamstring problems. And as wow. you know, you've seen footy players get yeah. crippled with chronic hamstring problems. So there was a question mark. So how's he going to come back? And he wobbled in his first game back for Manly. Yeah. Then he destroyed them. Then he destroyed Queensland. Yeah. Do you know what it was? It was, um, you know, he, he was playing right centre, right? But he was bobbing up all over the place. Mm. He was playing like he was playing fullback. If you have a look at a lot of the tries or the mm. three tries that he scored, he, he wasn't in the position that he was supposed to be in. What it was was sniffing out, if you remember. He was on a roaming commission. He was. But I don't know whether that was, uh, I don't know whether that was the, the instructions the instructions from Freddie Fittler, or it was just him, this is how I play. But, mate, he was unbelievable, just bobbing up in places that he shouldn't have been. But you've got to give the credit to Freddie and his team for mm. sending that mindset that I'll allow you to do this yeah. because, you know, few players are going to get to that and do things that are against what the edict mm. is, against what the mm. rules are. So Freddie's obviously said, look, sit, play what's in mate, front of you. Yeah, play what's in front of you. And, mate, even, even just, you know, how they play different, like – I think it was a. I think it was a try just before half time. Tedesco in the middle third of the field goes into dummy half, gets on the outside of a couple of blokes, busts through with his speed. Now a fullback running from dummy half, it's unf- unheard of. He's obviously seen something. Busts through in the wet. Back on the inside, there's Tommy Turbo just just turning up. I mean that Tommy Turbo and Jake Tavoyevich's performances, honestly. Shouldn't be understated about some of the great performances in Origin. They were unbelievable. Got a decent DNA, haven't they? You wouldn't mind putting it in a test tube. Oh. Like, they're just such talent. Oh. And, and Jake, you know, that, you, you, as you mentioned, you don't yeah. underestimate the idea of saying, okay, this is what we want you to do today. Yeah. We want you to start at the front of the engine room. I know. And he was going that well, though. I was going to say, no. Mate, won't. he played for 70 yeah. minutes in an Origin. Yeah, it's amazing. Mate, he could have played the whole game. I was talking to him after the game. He was springing around. Like, I said, mate, did you actually play today? Mate, he was as fresh as a daisy. And they're great characters too, aren't they? <coughs> oh, Both really likeable, you know like a laugh, and um, you sort of need that. Yeah. Timmy, their father, John, I, I've got to know him over the last couple of years in the, uh, in the origin. Mate, he is a gentleman, and I can see why his sons are like they are. Do you understand what I mean? They're being no, brought up wrong. Yeah. If, you're, if I'm standing... You're a product Or anyone, of anyone's yeah. standing... They, those guys come over to you and say, mate, you know, good morning, good to see you, how are you going... You know, like just stuff like that. Whereas other players are sort of like focus on what they're doing. They, you know, they wouldn't give a rat's about anyone else. You know, but these guys, these guys are gentlemen. And you know, a lot of talk about over there on the north side where they go and mark grounds and cook the barbecues and all that sort of stuff. Uh, they do a lot of that that sort of stuff. So, um, mate, they're good fellows. The Moan of Vale Raiders. Yeah. That's you, you and I have got six kids between us. That's the way that we want our children to conduct themselves. Mate, hundred percent. I, I want my kids to walk up to people that that they know and shake their hands and look them in the eye and say, you know, how are you doing today? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, look, they're very, very impressive. Now, what impressive. about the criticism of Freddie? I, I found it unbelievable, and I actually came uh, on air a few times and mm. said, "This is this is rubbish. It's garbage." Look, he has made a couple of changes because Clemmer's out. 
uh, Kotrix is out, yeah. Trebojevic wasn't available, Wade yep. Graham wasn't available, yep. and then had to make a couple of other choices of, of players that he thought would do a better job. And then they've gone out, people have come out and said, he shucked the baby out with the bath water, what's gone on here, has he gone mad? I, I couldn't believe it. Freddie, with his coaching staff, looked at the first game, right, and said, right, oh, where, did we, where did we go wrong? So they would have watched it a heap of times. Okay. So it comes out and they go, mate, we, I don't think we had enough experience. I don't think we won the ruck enough. Okay. Who are the players that can do those things that we didn't do in the first game? Right? So he comes up with a plan, says, this is a team. This is the team that I believe, and that's, what I, that's the big word, he believes in himself or what he thinks. Here's the team that I believe that can win. So he picks it. And what happened? They won. So he believed. All, all, the, all the other people that are writing about it and all that, they see you know six or seven changes, a couple through injury and all that sort of stuff, and they go, this bloke's crazy. He's not crazy at all. He's looked at it and said, what do we need to do? Where were we, where were we weak at in the first game? And who are the players that can do it for us in the second game? So he picked them. And he picked them and he, and he made a brave decision. He said, well, no, this is my team. This is my job. I need to get them to win. Well, I, I found some of the, the criticism over the top. I well, really he, he, he'd, rather, he'd rather fall on his own sword standing up to what he believes in than being on his hands and knees. And, mate, I, mate, I admire him for it. You know, he, he's got a great belief in what he's doing. And, you know, he, he wants that jumper to be respected. And, uh, you know, after that effort, gee, I, man, I couldn't believe they, they couldn't get off their own line. They, our line speed and just the way we, you know, just the way we got into them. Um, they didn't have any answers, Queensland. And, and I'm sure the players weren't going through the net reading all the newspapers and the criticism <laughs> or watching the TV shows, but... That was the other smart thing he did, sorry, Timmy. The other smart thing he did, went to Western Australia. So from the city, we went to Scarborough, which is 20 kilometres out. Like, no, no spot Scarborough. Please, I think I'll be going back. <laughs> oh, it was beautiful. Tim and Blocky's tour. But right, yeah, right on, right on the water there, mm. right on the beach. And, mate, everyone was relaxed. They, they, they did their work, got through, enjoyed each other's company. And mate, and uh, they moved into the city on the Friday for a couple of days, and then play the game on Sunday, and they they just exploded. It was unbelievable. But you can use that criticism too, can't you? Like uh, whether or not we think it was right or wrong, but but you can use any of that. They, they, but, in this, if you want to, you can use it. But but Timmy, there was a method to his madness. It's not it's not like all of a sudden he's just going off his head and just plucking seven blokes out. He actually they actually went through what they needed. And they come up with that too. And they're four of the smartest minds. And you've got a great oh, balance. You've got, you've got Brad mate, Fittler, Greg Alexander, Danny Badiris, and Craig Fitzgibbon. Yeah. Like you've well, got... let's, not, let's not forget the great Gaz come in for a couple of days yeah. to, to talk to the centres. And everyone was going, oh, these guys don't play in the centres. But they play their junior league in the centres. Play... Is that a case of being a good footballer? 100%. Like, I, I hear all this stuff about play left, play right, play this, play that. But when I was growing up and yeah. never got to any of the just, lofty just stages play. that you got to. Just play. But if you're good, you're good. But but the other thing too is, you know, this left and right and all that sort of stuff, Tommy Turbo proved that, mate, you turn up where, you, where you're going to get the ball. Mate, I, I just just the instincts of the bloke to know where to go. I mean, I was, mate, I was blown away. It's one of the great, one of the great origin performances. I, I, I thought he was sensational. The other guy I thought was unbelievable and mustn't have been too far away from a man of the match was Tyson Frizzell. Oh. He was everywhere. Yeah. He, he, he was like arthritis. He was in yeah. every joint he on was, the field. He, he was. The thing with him is, mate, he, quietly, he's, mate, he is a genuine, I mean genuine, not pretend, He's a genuine tough bloke, mm. and but but he doesn't say anything. He goes about his business. How he hung onto that ball when he scored that second try was unbelievable. That's just pure determination to 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 get over the stripe. I, and and even even just his defence, his intent on the Queensland pack of forwards, he say nothing, mate. They they'd be saying something, doing whatever. He he just plays, mate. And I'll tell you what, not many not many blokes like running at Tyson Frizzell. Do you reckon they'll try and get Cameron Smith back, Queensland? Uh, I don't know. They've got to do something. Mate, they can't. Mate, honestly, honestly, I, I, I've never seen a more dominant performance. So they, they've got to, I don't know what they do now. I don't know what they do. Um, but, you know, it's not our problem. But it's important now for New South Wales to wipe the, sl- See, wipe the slate clean and say, okay, it's even Stephen oh, now. Mate, enjoy. It's Freddie. First things he says. Mate, enjoy the win. Let's enjoy it. You should enjoy your wins, but... Mate, we haven't done anything yet. It's one all, and Queensland we've caught up. Queensland will come back. Don't worry, they'll come back. 
but I don't, I don't know whether I, I don't know whether they got the depth. When you have a look at it, when they lost when they uh, lost Joy Arrow, who's a workaholic, a great player, I I don't think that they replaced him. I know they replaced him with, with Wallace and all those sort of guys, but didn't replace him in that workload that he can do. So I don't know where they I don't know where they go from here. We'll see if uh, the famous words of the Queenslanders: "We pick and we stick." We'll see if that uh, we'll see if that's rock solid because it's the first time, really, that they've been under the pump. So you and I can say that on Behind Blue Eyes in our podcast, vodcast, but the players don't want to be thinking that, do they? You oh know? no! And the coaching no. staff, obviously, it's just like no. we are going to play the best they can ever be because they, they they won't be like that the yeah. other day. They are going to be coming out, and, and it happens that quick, doesn't it, Origin? But, it's it's yeah. so quick. But the great thing about Freddie, too, and the boys, you know, with Danny and, and Greg Alexander and all those sort of guys, uh, Fitzy, they'll they'll look at that game, but they won't be tied up in how good they went. They'll, they'll be looking at it going, where do we improve? How do we improve? So that uh, that's what they'll be up to now. How do we get better? How do we get better? How do we win? Uh, State of Origin three block. It's going to be. It's going to be. You know, uh, ANZ Stadium is going to be heaving, 80, 000, and they're yeah. going to be walking through the tunnel. Yeah, like, yeah, we, we, you and I are here in the centre of excellence, and yeah. it's amazing that they're going to walk through that tunnel that Kathy Freeman and others yeah. at the Sydney Olympics did. Yeah. It's, it's quite extraordinary. Mate, they'll be pumped. Look, I, I thought I thought the second game was all about attitude. It's amazing, amazing what you can do when you you know when you're behind behind the eight ball and you're under the pump. They had to win that game. Game two of Origins always the. You know, always nearly the best one, isn't it? Because you either one up or you you need desperation to get one in one all. Mm. So, mate, the third game is going to be grouse. And they just need to start quick. Start quick, mate. That, if you have a look at that game, game two, we we just look too fast for them. It, it, it just look, yeah. But they got to they got to try and come out and and replicate that what they did in game two. So Queensland are going to be better. There's no doubt about that because. No, their pride, they'll, they'll be hurting. Nothing worse than footy players, that are, their, their pride's been hurt. They'll come out. Uh, but New South Wales or you know, on the home ground will be hard to beat. Mitchell Pearce, um, you, you're a massive rap on yeah. him as a player. Is, is he a consideration? Oh, they'll, they'll, they'll consider him for sure. Well, that's only my way of thinking. Mm. But they'll also think about the first couple of games, and albeit he was injured, that he didn't, he didn't play. He didn't make himself available. I reckon that they. I reckon now Freddie will probably, you know, go. Well, you know what? Why don't we? Uh, why don't we stick with the blokes that, that did the job for us? Yeah, and go with go with Clemmer. I suppose the other sort of uh, theory out there is if Latrell Mitchell comes and blows them away on the weekend, and Nathan yeah. Cleary's unavailable, do you keep Wade Graham on the bench and do you put White in, in at number six? You've got there are a couple of good options Some because good options. he's been he's been extraordinary for Canberra too, yeah, hasn't he? Yeah. White in that six? No, he has, mate. And you know he just blown, he was good too. Yeah, blown blokes off the park. He's mm. he's aggressive and hard, mm. and runs hard, and nothing seems to nothing seems to phase him. He's yeah. one of those sort of guys. Lovely kid. Real uh, happy sort of country bloke, real happy go lucky. But once he cro- crosses that white stripe, he gets a little bit of white line fever, and I, I like that about him. Um, yeah, they'll be they'll be thinking about all those sort of things, mate. Um, but I reckon at the end of the day that Freddie would have been that happy, apart from Clemmer. You got to bring Clemmer back in the side. He was our best player in the first game. Uh, apart from that, I, I reckon he might I reckon he might stick with the squad he's got. Do you have a good time in Perth? I loved it, mate. What a beautiful place. Mm. What a what a great advertisement for our game. Sixty thousand there at the stadium. It was unbelievable. It was pouring rain too. Sixty thousand people there, crying out for a footy side. They are just as long as they don't go with the pirates. What sort of logo is that going to be? I mean, <laughs> you got to wear a patch on your. You gotta, I, I, I love and have a, What is it? Yeah. You've got well, a bird on that, your shoulder. What's that got to do with Western Australia? It's a very. It's very, another. It's, it's another very American show. football kind of thing. It's another the, show. Uh, I, I, I look personally, and that's another subject, I suppose. I love this idea of of taking get that third game somewhere else because it is uh, the number one product in the game, and it is a national thing that turns over a hundred million a year. Yeah. You need to sell it. Yeah. Why not? It's the best thing in yeah. in your pocket. Is it just me? Or I was a stickler for the traditional jumper, but the dark blue made us look meaner. I don't know. What did you think? I like it. And I, you like, know, I like. I like. I like it now. And as a bigger man myself, I like the darker colours because oh, it thins you down. It a bit. does. It. You can pull it down. I should have worn. I should have worn the darker jumper. <laughs> now, look, people can get, become uh, Blatchy's Blues. Obviously, um, not everyone in New South Wales can play the game, but you can get behind. So, download the app, the New South Wales Blues app, and you can buy the uh, Blatchies tickets um, through the app. Uh, how good is it when you see them all oh, in the 
the head. Mate, that's unbelievable. With the hair. What, I think, what is it, 20 or 30,000 or whatever it is? Let's make it 40. Let's break a record. And let's break a record, get your wig on and, mate, I'll tell you what, even I'll wear one of the wigs. I'll look forward to that. Maybe maybe do the podcast next week's <laughs> podcast in a week. We, we might. That. Yeah. yeah, 100%. So uh, the, uh, how does that help players when they see the crowd? When they, oh, mate, that's a big buzz, mate. Mm. I, uh, I don't know. One of the great scenes for me was Jared Haynes scoring that try uh, here at ANZ Stadium and just running over the Blatchy Blues and just, you know. That, uh, that, Throwing those himself sort of, in the crowd yeah, virtually. Yeah, all that sort of scenes, mate. It's great. They'll get behind them. And, mate, there's going to be a buzz around. Don't worry. There'll be a buzz. Everyone's looking forward to the game. It's one all. One, one all. Go, you blue. We survived. That is the Blue Eyes.